Hello everyone, this is Francois from Octopress and today we will continue the e-commerce series and talk about the most exciting part, lead generation. You know, there are plenty of different ways to generate new leads, but one of the most famous ones is to get leads from Google Maps. And Google Maps is not just a map website, it's not just a way to find the right location when we are lost, no. Actually, Google Maps is one of the richest databases in the world. We can find the name, the number of reviews, the rating, the category, the address, the website, the phone numbers, and the opening hours of any small businesses based on a particular location. So, what if, instead of trying to get new leads and spending hours to find new leads, you just slowly open your laptop, follow these tutorials, and get 300 new leads within the next hour. Don't forget to subscribe to Octopass YouTube channel, and with further ado, let's get started. So, as an example, we are going to scrape insurance agencies in Houston. If you want to scrape Google Maps, the first thing we need to do is actually to start a new task in Octopus. It's really simple. We copy the URL, we go to Octopus, and once we are in the home page, we paste the link and we click on start. Okay, the first thing we need to deal with is actually to remove this page because if we remove it, we will have access to the Google Map website. So I turn on the browse mode and I simply click on I agree. And as you can see now, it's better. I just need to save what I've done. So I will save the cookies. I click on the action settings, use cookie and use cookie from the current page. And I click on OK. Now, if you're a frequent user of Octopus, you may know that most of the tasks start with a pagination. Because a pagination, it helps us to scrape all the results from multiple pages. So I will create a pagination. I first need to turn off the browse mode, to click on the next page button, and loop click single image. And as you can see, now the pagination is created. To make it work, I will set up an Ajax timeout of 10 seconds, that's good. And as you can see, we go from this page to this one, so everything works fine. But if in your case it doesn't work, you may need to modify the X path. How to replace an X path? You simply go on the action settings of pagination, and here is the X path. So I delete it and I'm going to paste this one. I copy the XPath, I paste it and I click on OK. OK, in this case, it's only if it doesn't work, if everything works for you, please don't do this step. After we have done our pagination, it's time to slow down a little bit because we need to understand the structure of this page. Our purpose now is to select as many items as possible and there are around 20 results per page. So to select all these 20 elements, we should tell Octopus to scroll down to the bottom of the page because it helps to load more content and then to select all these 20 items in order to extract more data. The problem, the only problem with this is that it's currently impossible to do it automatically. So, we should do the same thing, but in a different way. You will see how it goes. We first need to click on the first item, and only on the first item. I click on it, and I click, click URL. And same thing as before, I set up an Ajax timeout of 10 seconds. But just one specificity, this time I click on action settings 
and I uncheck open in a new tab. And the funny thing with this process is that now we have access to the 20 elements within this very page. You don't see them? The 20 results we are looking for are just located here. As you can see, all these elements are listed here. So it's time to create our loop item. I simply select the block of the first item, then I select the block of the second item, and you see 20 elements have been selected. I simply click on loop, click each element. And same thing as before, the Ajax stay mode is 10 seconds. And before we move on, we click on the action settings and we uncheck open in a new tab. Okay, now it's time for the most exciting part of the video, data extraction. All we need to do is to collect the data we need because we've got our detail page. First, let's extract the name of the company. I click on it and I click extract the text of the selected element. Same thing for the number of reviews, for the rating, for the category, for the address, and so on. The websites, the phone number, and the opening hours. Actually, the opening hours is a bit tricky, so you simply need to extract a text, a random text, and we will modify it later on. So here is the intermediary result. The point is Google is actually really strict with web scraping and this is why we need to modify the XPath for each element. Do not worry, actually we have prepared everything for you. Let's start with the name, the company name. I click customize XPath, I delete the current XPath and I'm going to copy and paste the new XPath. I paste it and I click on OK twice. And we repeat the same process for each element. For the number of reviews, I remove the current XPath and here is the new XPath for the number of reviews. Okay, so I've revised pretty much all the XPath, but I keep the last one unchanged. Why? Because it's so important to know how to write your own XPath in order to keep it mind easily. So we will see how to write an XPath. It could look pretty much impressive, but it needs not be. So how to find an XPath in order to select the opening hours. To do that, we go to Google Map and we are going to select the HTML code showing the opening hours. I make a right click, inspect, and we are going to select the opening hours. And there it is. Here is the code. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy, copy element. And I'm going to paste it in a Word spreadsheet. Here is the result. I know, it could look pretty impressive, right? But as we will see, most of this code is not necessary at all. Actually, all of the XPath you will write looks like the same. It has the same structure. An XPath looks like this. You start with this, then you insert the name of the tag, at, and the attribute. That's it, that's really simple. The name of the tag here is table. That's it. I simply replace the word tag by table. And the attribute is actually class equal to, and within the quote, this text. This is what we call the attribute. So I'm going to copy and paste it. 
And as we can see, we've got the exact same result. So this is the correct XPath. I simply copy it and I will paste it. I click on OK twice. And now we are good. The step six is to click on the back to results button. Usually we don't add this, but Google Maps is a really special case because if we don't click back to results, we can't extract more than one page. So if we want to get all these elements, we need to click on back to results and click element. And same thing, we set up an Ajax timeout of 10 seconds. The point is, this time, we need to drag the click item outside the loop item. Okay, your task should look like this. And actually, it is over. All we need to do is to start our extraction. So I click on save, then I click on run. If you are a premium user of Octopars, you can click run the cloud, Otherwise, we click run on your device. And I just want to check with you if we haven't done any mistake. So let's take a look. Okay, now it's time to click on the first item, as we have said to Octopus. Here it is. Now it's time to extract the data. And once it is done, it will select the second element, and so on, and so on. And look the final result. We've got 371 lines. We simply need to export them to remove duplicates, of course, and we will export them in an Excel spreadsheet. And here is what it looks like. Hope my video got your confusion cleared away. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos regarding Octopus and web scraping. We will always keep you updated.